Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. In yesterday's video on the Fujifilm X100 Mark VI, a ton of you asked questions about the things that I've added to my X100 Mark VI. These are some things, some things are just for fun, like I just think that this is a really good looking strap, but some things have much more utility and today we're gonna go through all that. My gear guide for the X100 Mark VI. And I have about a dozen things on the list, so let's just jump into it. The very first thing that we're gonna talk about is the, the little bits that kind of live on the camera. And the first one up is, is this little thumb rest piece. It slides into the hot shoe on top and it gives me a place to put my thumb. Now, these cameras notably don't have much of a grip. It's a very skinny grip. There, there's something to hold on to in the front, but when you hold on in the front, there's kind of nowhere to put your thumb in the back. Like when you're holding the camera, your thumb is either accidentally pressing buttons or accidentally rotating dials. There's kind of nowhere to put it. So you add this little bit up top and now your thumb has a perfect spot and you have like a good squeeze on the camera now. It feels much more secure in your hand with a thumb rest on top. I will link this one down below, but there is another thumb rest that I've been looking at. I might pick it up and I think it's by LensMate. It has a hinge on it so that when you press this way, it doesn't go anywhere, but that you could lift out this way. And the reason for that is you see how See, without the thumb rest, I can easily grab this dial and I can rotate my shutter speed just like that. But when I add that thumb rest in there, it blocks this backside. And now I kind of have more of like a pinchy grip on turning that. And it, it does, in fairness, it makes it a little trickier having this thumb rest on there. So if it had a little hinge and I could just kind of slide my thumb in, it would push up out of the way and then I could grab that dial every time as if I didn't even have a thumb rest on there. But then when I put my thumb this way, I had a th it, it seems clever. I have not bought it yet. I'll link it below also, but it, it does seem clever. Having a thumb rest in general almost seems essential to this camera. Next up, let's talk about this camera strap from Clever Supply Co. It is very stylish. A ton of people asked about it because it's just a it's a good looking camera strap and it's skinny. You don't you don't find a lot of these skinny camera straps fitting kind of more of these smaller bodied cameras, even from Clever Supply Co from my other cameras. I've had this strap in the past and this was like a skinny strap. But if you take this strap and you put it on this camera, like it's just too big. This strap is great when I'm, I'm like walking around with my a7 IV. It does have the Peak Design Quick Connects on it, so I can have these on the camera quickly put on and off my camera strap. And I think Clever Supply Co. also makes this skinny version with the Peak Design pieces on there. And for some of you that were asking, this is the 40 inch skinny strap, which if you're always gonna have your camera on the front here, I think you could go for the shorter one. Like if it was up here, it feels like that would actually be better. And I could still pull it up, take horizontal photos, take vertical photos, probably pretty easy. But the 40 inch version allows you to also go crossbody. I like walking around with my camera on the back. I can hold my kids. I can do different things with my hands without worrying about the camera swinging in front. And then when I want to take pictures, I can bring it around here, still shoot just like that. And even when it is just hanging on the front, it's not terrible. It's like a, like a belly camera. <laughs> okay, next up is this lens hood. And I'm gonna show you two lens hoods because I've tested both of these. The one I have on here and that I've, I've been rocking probably most is by Hogue. And you'll see like, like look how much that pinches in at the end. And then this one is by Nisi, N-I-S-I, I think it's Nisi. And check out the difference in size of opening. Where the Hogue, kind of narrows down, like it's a circle, and then they kind of narrowed it down to make that square front face. That's pretty much like the limit. Like if you were any tighter than that, you would see it in the frame. Whereas the Nisi kind of flared from the circle to make a much larger box. And the only thing that, that I think, the only reason that I tried this and I took it off pretty quickly was because of this. Let me show you. And I can, I can adjust the hood really nicely. This is actually a benefit. If it's crooked, I just kind of slide it, but that's because this piece just pops off. So it kind of has a base ring that goes on there. And then this hood slides over that. And my only issue with that is this is it's not held on super tight. Two issues. One, the wider opening means that it's less protected. Like if it's just hanging on my hip, things that are gonna kind of try to go in there and maybe hit my lens 
it's less protected. It does have a built-in UV filter with this one, but it's just, it makes me want to put this lens hood on all the time. And my second issue with it is this. Um, it can just get knocked off. So if you are gonna hang this around, around your shoulder like this, maybe you're walking through crowds, maybe you're in a busy spot, the lens hood could just kind of get knocked and you're gonna lose this piece. Whereas on the Hogue, it's not, it's not designed like that. Drew that back on. The Hogue is still a base ring and a hood, but the hood screws onto the base ring that screws onto the camera. All of these pieces are totally secure and it leaves you open to, if you want to, you can still use the original Fujifilm lens cap over it. So it doesn't come with its own lens cap. It just comes in a way that you could put this on. I will tell you though, for the 5,000 images that I've shot, I have never put this back on because it it's like, it's narrow, I don't know, I just feel protected. So both good hoods, I think it's it's probably more of a, of a visual thing of like, do you like this look on the front of your camera or do you like this look on the front of your camera? I think it's, I think this is an aesthetic uh, option. Oh, it is for me. There is one more reason though that I feel protected with this guy. This guy, the Nisi comes with a UV filter built into it. The Hogue does not, but I, uh, I'm running a filter pretty much at all times on this thing now. And that is, that is this little piece, a Tiffin Pro Mist filter. This is one eighth power. And then in my bag, I'm carrying around a little Shimoda filter pack. And in here I have a quarter power. So I have quarter power and eighth power Pro Mist for this camera. I think I'll save why I'm using these two filters for my, like how I'm shooting the camera, why I'm doing what I'm doing to create the images that I'm creating. But I have pretty much lived with the eighth Promis filter on there. And then, and then I really haven't played with this one yet, but I, I've got some ideas of how I'm going to use the quarter mist mostly at night. Next up is, is this little brass shutter release button that I picked up. Hey, let me take a quick break right there to thank the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. If you don't already know about Squarespace, they are the all-in-one website building platform that I've used for over 10 years for my photography business. And now I am building a website for this vlog channel. My entire new website will be designed on Squarespace. I can't tell you much yet, but I will be leveraging features that Squarespace offers to, to just make a really cool place for you guys to be able to have some, some new tools in your arsenal for photography and videography. If you want to take your business's website to the next level, shoot to squarespace.com. It is super easy to get signed up for a free trial. You go in there during that free trial, download one of their professional templates, and you're pretty much good to go. Like swap your photos in for their photos, swap your info in for their info, and you already have a very dope website. Shoot to the first thing in the description, go over there again, free trial. And when you are ready to go live, use code David Manning and you save 10% off at checkout. Another massive thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video and just support my channel in general. I'm very, very excited for this new website. Back to, back to the video. Next up is, is this little brass shutter release button that I picked up. Look, this is entirely unnecessary. It's just for fun. It's just for looks. This camera works totally normally, totally fine without that on there, but it sure is fun to add a touch of flair and I went for brass because I'm hoping that like over time this will patina and like kind of look more rustic and look look cool again. You can get all sorts of different shutter release buttons there. My preference was just brass. I thought it looked cool. Next up is just some basic things that I did. I threw a screen protector onto the screen. I'll link that guy below there. I, I put screen protectors on all my cameras. Doesn't matter what I buy. The first thing I do is put a screen protector on there because boy, do I hate when a screen gets scratched. That drives me crazy. As for SD cards on this thing, I am running a pro grade V90, 128 gigabytes, but that's only because these are from my bigger cameras. You can run, if you're just shooting photos, you can run a V30 in this thing. I would say for most people, you probably wanna run a V60 just to, to have faster read and write speeds. It's gonna speed things up in camera. It's gonna speed things up, especially on your computer. When you're uploading a bunch of images, it's going to speed things up. On 128 gigabyte cards, I'm getting well over 5,000 JPEG images. So if I'm just shooting JPEG, 
I think I'm around 5,000 images that I have on one 128 gigabyte card. And if I shoot JPEG plus raw, I think I'm somewhere around like 1800, 1850 images, JPEG plus raw on 128 card. For batteries, I picked up a first power, which I've used these for my bigger camera. So I know first power is good, but it is a dual charger. It comes with two batteries and the dual charger, very inexpensive. This is not something where, where I would say you should go buy the Fujifilm specific batteries. I think there's no reason for it. You should uh, save some money and you get a dual charger in the process. I think you get two batteries plus the dual charger for like the price that you would buy one Fujifilm OEM battery for. And I will gladly pocket that extra money. Next up is, is something kind of, again, unnecessary, but but super fun. You do have a built-in flash on the X100 Mark VI. It is it is good, it works well, but it's, it's teeny tiny. You see that teeny tiny little flash? The output's not gonna be crazy. And if you're gonna use a hood like this, you have to take the hood off to shoot that flash because that flash is so close to the hood. If you don't, anything that's within like four or five feet, you're gonna see the shadow of the hood in the image. So I picked up this thing. This is the Godox Lux Junior Flash. It has kind of retro dials on the back, a very retro feel. And when you pair it up to this, you do have to take your thumb grip off. But when you pair it with this camera, it looks like they were made for each other. Look at that, like very retro vibe. You've got the retro dials on there. You get a lot more controls than you do with your built-in flash. I can go into manual mode. I can sit there and just dial this thing in manually. I can go to auto mode. I can adjust that within here. I just have a lot more options and I have a whole lot more power with this flash. I think it runs on two AAA batteries, which I just keep a couple extra in my bag. Okay, my last few must have things, uh, travel tripod. I've been shooting this thing on a tripod a bunch and you guys know if you've watched this channel at all, that this is the greatest travel tripod that they're ever done been. You will save yourself a ton of money by going for the Ulanzi Zero tripod and it's better. It's better than the Peak Design tripod in pretty much every way, and it's significantly cheaper. I opted for the F38 head on mine. You can just do Arca Swiss, or you can do the F38 if you are using the F38 plates. Make sure you have an F38 plate if you order the F38 head. Best travel tripod that there is. Lastly, this bag. A ton of people asked about this bag. And it's also from Clever Supply Co. Clever Supply Co. that started out making these like super dope leather camera straps back in the day. They sent this thing to me like two or three years ago. Now they've gone on to making all different styles of leather straps. And then recently they came out with this bag. And this bag, man, it's so good. Like if you like the utility of Peak Design products, but you want something that like is more stylish, I would say this is this is the bag that you want. Got dual side handles on both sides, a small kind of skinny pouch here up front. We've got that nice big messenger opening up top, three spots to put gear. You got a zipper bit up top with a bunch of different organization to stash batteries, stash extra gear up top here. And it's, it's just a killer bag. It's got enough space to fit my tablet here in the back. And very cleverly, Clever Supply Co. Their dividers have SD card holders in them. It's one of the most clever uses of space that I've seen out of a out of a camera bag. Is SD card holders in your your dividers inside the bag? There, I just I'm so impressed with this bag, but mainly I'm impressed with it because I do like Peak Design gear. But I don't know. I kind of find it very. What is the word? technical, like it looks more technical than stylish. And this bag has like, see like the leather bits right here. And, and this is webbing, but it's, oh, it's a good color. The, the zippers are kind of like, they like look brass. They're definitely not brass, but they look brass. It's got a, a full leather bottom. This is just a beautiful bag to rock around with. It doesn't look so like technical. It looks more stylish, but it has all the utility of a technical bag, like a Peak Design bag. I hope they don't mind me, me framing that that way. It just feels like my Peak Design messenger bag that I love, like my favorite bag to use before this one. And now that I have this, I'm like, oh, 
I have everything that I have with that bag, plus some clever pockets, and it looks good. Like, my wife isn't bummed that I bring this bag with me somewhere, where with my other gear bag, she's like, you're bringing your camera bag, are ya? <laughs> and then one, one more bag from these guys that I, I got to test out in Hawaii a bunch, but it's this guy. This is their sidekick bag, and it is perfect for this camera if you don't rock the lens hood. So if you do not have the lens hood on here, you just have, so there the camera is just with a normal ring cover on there and the lens cap. And this thing fits in here, perfect. It's kind of like, again, like the style of this bag, it, it matches very closely and it fits this camera. It's like it was made for it. You still got a spot up front. You can throw some batteries, an extra SD card on the inside. If I pop this out of there, there's like webbing on this side, a web pockets there and there. Oh, hey, look. New be a good human lens, new be a good human lens cloths. Um, I think I'm gonna start throwing these into shirt orders. I don't know if we'll sell these specifically on the store, but I will send these with shirt orders or hoodie orders that come in. Look at that thing. It's like the perfect size bag for this camera. It, again, it really feels like they made this for, hey, look, there's a back pocket. Hidden pocket? That's cool. Okay, that is everything. The gear, the stuff, the fun. I, again, this is like a super fun camera for me. It's much more of like a personal life camera than a business camera. I'm, I just, I wanna capture my life on this camera. And because it's fun, I think I can lean more into the like, oh, I could look a little brass bit and get a nice leather strap and, you know, make it more stylish than my, my big cameras that are for utility. My big cameras are like image quality matters, video quality matters, dynamic range, ma all that matters. And for this man, I'm just having fun. I feel like I'm having fun with photography again with this camera and that's that's really neat. This is all the stuff that I'm using to, uh, to have that fun. Let me know if you guys have anything for this camera that you're like, I love it, you've gotta go pick it up. And let me know if, uh, if any of this interests you. There'll be links in the description to all of this stuff, especially this camera bag. I love, like I, I might make a whole video just on, on Clever Supply Co's camera bags and how cleverly they are designed. You walk through this bag and you go, a photographer designed this bag. Like this wasn't in a boardroom office kind of thing. Like, like a photographer with real experience sat and designed that bag. All right. I'll see you soon.